Today, we will be discussing the lore, history, and psychology of Xavier's Champions. My name is Deep Cut, we will be talking about Craig of the Creek as it airs new episodes all week, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it, and let's dive into it. At the end of the reign of King Cheyenne, she left the crown to Xavier with a little advice, to choose his BFF very wisely as she regretted choosing Randy. Xavier's BFF ended up being Maya, though she assumed the role somewhat by default after Omar, aka the Green Poncho, not only refused to fight for the title of BFF, but still managed to beat Maya when she came at him anyway. Despite Maya's clear athletic ability, her anger issues made it so no coach wanted to put her on a team, giving her no physical outlet for that anger. Early on in their friendship, Omar would help by entertaining her with jokes. When presented with the opportunity to be Xavier's BFF, she makes her decision very fast. Most any kid would love to be Xavier's friend for the perks, such as the candy, but to Maya, those perks are a bit more meaningful because of her rejection from things like team sports. The perks could be non-existent, and Maya would still want to be the BFF because of its prestige, and she makes sure to use that to always highlight how important and strong she is by even making sure the other champions understand that they are beneath her, such as when she forced Jackie to move off of a prized spot at Xavier's sleepover. The other champions, Aggie, Jackie, and Kun Sup, would each end up rising to the name of champion over the years, leading into their introduction into the show at Xavier's birthday tournament. I would not classify any of these characters as villainous, certainly not in the way that Xavier is, but it has been interesting to see their more antagonistic psyche unravel in the aftermath of the war between the two sides of the creek. The term champion does not just refer to them as Xavier's champions, but also as champions from the various tribes that they come from, each with their own unique culture and link to the king. Aggie, aka the Squashinator, is a member of the Acorn Knights, a line of knights that would have been defending the king since the very beginning under Kenneth's rule. Aggie, being a naturally big and strong girl, would have naturally joined these knights at a young age, possibly even under Cheyenne's reign. Her extra strength and willingness to destroy likely made her a quick favorite of Xavier's, and he would have made her the leader of the knights very fast, and part of his inner circle of champions. It is hard to say if any of these acorn knights actually liked Aggie any more than they had to pretend to because of Xavier's favoritism for her. Aggie is a very big girl, the kind we all knew back in grade school who knew how to throw her weight around. At that young age, being naturally big gives you an obvious advantage over other kids in many forms of play, and Aggie has developed an ego around being the best because of that, not just because of her physical feats, but also things like drawing, though she only brings it out not as a point of pride, but as a way to attack Craig emotionally through victory. King Xavier was able to buy her love more with praise than with candy, just like Maya, though unlike Maya, I don't think she had any real friends beforehand. None of the champions are really seen returning to the cliques they shared their uniform with after Xavier's fall but the King's Guard as a whole was united particularly to help him as opposed to other kids like the King's Kitchen, who were still able to enjoy cooking for each other and the other kids without a king ruling over them. The guards, with nothing to do and no one to guard, would disperse, leaving no friends for Aggie other than, of course, the other champions. While they did come from different groups before making it to Xavier, they seem to have bonded with each other and will likely become their own little clique as the series progresses. Kun Sup is also known as the Blur, not just as his title as a champion, but as a nickname that he forces throughout the creek. He was the champion of the Cherry Blossoms, who seem to have disbanded along with the Acorn Knights, giving the impression that this group may also have only formed to serve Xavier in some way. The same may also be true of Jackie and the Water Lilies, explaining why none of the kids had a real social group to return to after Xavier left, and cliques who only existed to serve the king would have dispersed. Though it should be noted that Kun Sup seemed to maintain some level of popularity even after Xavier left that Aggie herself was not seen having in her episode. Kun Sup cares more about his nickname than his speed, which his nickname is based off of. 
and his family, he is the slowest, so they call him Slowpoke. Despite this, his family's natural speed still makes him much faster than any kid at the creek. So using the same speed that earned him the nickname Slowpoke at home, he becomes known as the Blur at the creek. To make sure this nickname sticks, he obsessively puns with it, as well as makes non-stop references to speedy characters like Sonic the Hedgehog so that people never stop identifying him with his nickname. This is a great example of how children sometimes flex during playtime by showing off traits they not just see their parents or older siblings exhibiting, but traits that they are criticized for not exhibiting themselves. This isn't just in reference to Kun Sup being speedy, but the casual way with which he taunts or teases someone. As he explains, it's just what he does to the people he likes, including himself, a habit developed by constant jokes at his expense from within his family. Although he does not like bad nicknames because he can understand his feelings on that in particular, those stem from the same casually mean mindset and the name of good-natured humor that those nicknames come from, as the episode The Bad Nickname explored. Jackie, aka The Arm, is interesting to me because of how aggressive but well thought out he is, whereas Kun Sup and Aggie seem to be aggressive at a very quick pace. He doesn't seem to hold anything against Craig the way Aggie did, and wasn't quick to befriend him the way Kun Sup did, but instead seems very comfortable having them existing as very casual enemies. Jackie is of course deaf, and has undoubtedly affected his playstyle, which has to be geared more around physical interactions with other kids as opposed to communication, which can even be limiting with someone as well versed in sign language as Kun Sup around. Because of this, Jackie is not just athletic, but physical, and the only way to play with him is to be just as physical, as it's the only way he can truly interact with you directly. Because of this, having something of a rivalry with everyone he plays with is akin to being a friend of his. Kunsup and Jackie have bonded in particular, and in the most recent episode, we see that Aggie would also play hooky with them to go on the champion's hike from time to time by telling Xavier that they all had dentist appointments. Maya was apparently invited before, but had declined and perhaps even threatened to go to Xavier about their secret waterfall, though she likely understood why they kept it such a secret, as no matter what way they go about it, Xavier would ruin it for all of them, so she ended up keeping it a secret too. Craig was invited on this hike with them under the pretense that he would be drawing it out on his map, as even if Xavier were to discover the waterfall now, he wouldn't be able to dominate it in such a way that they couldn't just go alone at a different time. Along the way, Maya explains that they do all like Craig, and the real reason he is coming is because he is not like Xavier, the person they tried to hide it from, whereas they trust Craig not just to map it, but to share the secret with anyone he deems worthy while sharing his map. While they try to trick Craig into eating a pinecone, we see that they antagonize each other just as much as they do everyone else, so while they aren't as soft to play with as Craig and his friends might seem, it does show that they are truly good-natured with it. The champions have quickly become some of my favorite characters on the show, so let me know which one is your favorite in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why don't you tell me what characters on Craig of the Creek you would like me to see break down the lore, history, and psychology of next. I'll also link to our playlist right here where you can watch all of the previous videos we've done on Craig of the Creek. See you guys next time!